news, everyone? You're obviously confused and aroused. You're listening to The Slurmcast, a podcast for no reason. Today we will be discussing Futurama Season 3, Episode 1, Amazon Women in the Mood, with your host, Tommy Roulette. How's it going? <laughs> Pete Woodward. That's me. And I'm Rick Orchie. Uh Joining us today is our special guest, Teresa Gromick. Hey, buddy. Oh, hey. Thanks for uh, coming on the show. How are you doing? I'm all right. You ready to deconstruct this episode with us? <laughs> Don't even start. Don't even start. Oh. <laughs> I'm really glad that you had nothing better to do on Valentine's Day than come record yeah, this podcast. Special huge thanks Aww, for, no for letting us take you away from your husband. And well, I can extra guilt you because today, today is my dad's uh, 65th birthday as well. It, Are they doing something? Isn't this what he would uh, want My mom's for getting his surgery birthday? tomorrow. Oh. Yeah, for can his you daughter too. I want you to Internet go on a claim. podcast he doesn't understand that a bunch of nerds listen to. He That'll make me happy, honey. Basically still has a flip phone. None of our parents understand what podcasts are. I tried no. to explain it to my mom this weekend, and I think she kind of got it at the end. When you t- say it's like, it's a radio show that people listen to on the internet. And then when I was explaining that, like... That's exactly how I would explain it, yeah. Then I was explaining how, like, we can see where all the downloads come from, and they're all over the world and stuff, and she's just like... Well, you know, then, then, then it was just turning Humble into, brag. Like, like, does not compute. She just wanted you to stop talking. She's like, I get it, Pete. Love I had you. to, every Tuesday before we came to do this for months, I had to explain it to my dad. Thank God I don't have to do that Aww. anymore. My dad listen. didn't even know it existed. <laughs> <laughs> he can listen to all the podcasts he wants <laughs> And now. now they don't exist. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, so I hope that surgery goes well tomorrow. <laughs> That's my mom. Can, can you say uh, what, it, what it is, what she's having surgery for? You don't mm-hmm. have to. I just, yeah, don't. don't. I'm just Breast augmentation? <laughs> <laughs> Have you met my mother, Pete? Well, I, she might I, deck you. I, I've met you. <laughs> it's not the same. She would just deck you. That's no. Oh, it's off to a <clears throat> uncomfortable start. A little bit. Yeah, a lot um, of personal information about my parents just out there. Well, you sure. were, we, you put it out there. I we did, were completely right. ignorant of that. I forgot that birthdays are confidential. You could you could like <laughs> bleep that whole thing for like three. I minutes. need to find something to like. That I can put in where it's like we have a conversation, but then just a noise over it that isn't annoying. Like, I don't want it to be an annoying noise. So I was looking up adorable noises. And I was, like, finding, like, little kitten meows or, like, little baby animals making noise that I could just put over when there's information or something that needs to be cut out. But there's certain things that need to be back in there because we call back to just it. Like and some, it's just not yeah. funny. Some little meows where a part cut it out and it just goes <laughs> yeah. back into some Dr. Mario music. <laughs> do, 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 My do, meow do, has do, surgery it's, it's almost, I want to do like the audio equivalent of like on TV when it's like technical difficulties and they have like the yeah, like the Simpsons or like yeah, the yeah. drum cameraman or whatever. Oh my God. Man, Tom, you're out. Teresa, you're in. Go to recording thingy studio. So first of all, I watched these episodes on Netflix, and they played a nice little switcheroo on us because season, well, it's not even the right season on Netflix, but the next episode in order was Parasites Lost, which is our next episode. Yeah, I figured Tom would know something about this one. Because Netflix goes by broadcast seasons, not production seasons. what we were doing. No, no, no. Oh, no, we're going by production. Production. That's what the DVD goes DVDs go. So, yes. so, So... as far as like, because the DVDs came before, I'm only Netflix. saying this to you, Teresa, because you uh, the look in your face. I don't know if that was like, a, oh, I see, or if you're like a, the um, production as far as like them getting together. We're going to make these 12 episodes this season or 24 or whatever, mm-hmm. and then stop and then take you know their break or whatever and come back. Now we're going to make these, but they might be finishing the one and broadcasting the other or not. You know what I mean? Like, as mm-hmm. far it's, as there's a lot of like things that like preempt. The having that episode or something like that, so everything gets like backed up a little bit. Is this the and first then, time you've had television production mansplained to you? Because I honestly think it's the <laughs> first time we've we've mansplained anything on this show. <laughs> I just don't care. Yeah, but I'm gonna let you do you. That's uh, so. I watched half of Parasites Lost before I thought this isn't mm-hmm. right, and then I, I so I watched two episodes this week. Glad I took notes on both. But the, that's uh, why, uh, as far as like future guests and everything like that. Pay attention to the name of the episode, not what is next chronologically, especially oh, for yeah, us. Oh, yeah, because Netflix is all jacked up. Uh, we anyway. have it 
I'm really yeah. glad I'm here for your planning session. The uh, the this jumbotron was like a skeleton. I thought it was like bouncing a girl, but was he just punching her in the stomach and chasing her? I just noticed a f- skeleton chasing like some fat cartoon lady. I, 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 it was really, it was kind of sinister and weird. That was the part I didn't get where it was just like... Like Teresa, a, do you notice the cartoon in the beginning? I try, but here's the we don't we probably don't have the best internet connection at my house. So anytime on Netflix, when I you start, start it, yeah. it's pixelated. Mine so yeah. I, I don't even, and I, it would take so much to go back and, and pause like it and wait for it to catch but, up. Yeah, it's and it goes into like a good three minutes. So it's like yeah. I know but, what I'm watching, but I don't know. yeah, is that because Quincy's probably downstairs watching dog porn? He just absorbs the internet, actually. <laughs> your dog. He blocks he... the Wi-Fi <laughs> in your house. He sits on top of the router and he's like a Faraday cage or something. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But it's, it's oh pugs. That was that was Pete. That was it's good. called uh, art for art's sake. Who's art? I don't know. 1934. I didn't get around to looking it up. How could Nibbler's hairballs be bigger in mass than Nibbler himself? How, How can does he eat again, a whole? Go ahead, uh, Teresa. Have you have you seen a dog? Like, there's things that come out of my dog that I I don't understand it. I well, I'm not talking about necessarily. I mean, because I've the, truly witnessed her dog eat a quarter and poop a full dollar out. <laughs> <laughs> That's half true. Wait, 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 wait. He's, he's pooped out two dollars <laughs> before. A, a silver <laughs> dollar or a paper? dollar? No, it's paper. It's a buffalo nickel. <laughs> He's got an entire mint in that he stomach. Shit out, he shit out the actual, like, value of a rare coin. It's He just ingests it, and he kind of... Does he, um, if, like, if he eats his own poop after pooping out money, does the value go up? Like, does it become more concentrated? Depends on how you define value. If you put a quarter in him, do you have to, and it's after 6 o'clock, do you have to wait till the next morning to get the dollar back? <laughs> that happened once where Eric passed out, and uh, the next morning his phone was half chewed, and uh, he took Quincy out, and there was $2. Like, he I pooped remember out that. $2. Yeah, I remember him telling me about that. Quincy he, also I don't know signed, how much up he for, ate. signed him up for Grinder <laughs> <laughs> as he was chewing on his phone. Pretty much. You He's just gotta, you got to whisper what president you want from Quincy in his ear after he eats something. So See, I was still on Grinder for that joke. Oh. And I was like, president on Grinder, you got to whisper. I was thinking about on. what your husband would well, be. Well, I, th- right? I think on we Grindr? can all agree that An it's otter? probably the vice president who's on Grinder. Well, yeah. Yeah. I don't remember what precipitated this, but uh, let's make Zoidberg do it. <laughs> and then... Then when Zoidberg comes out without his shell... They were talking shell, about cleaning up after... Oh, after the, the hairball, hair was that it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. After um, Fry looked at it and said, oh, he's got me beat. The noises that sh- shellless Zoidberg makes. Oh, when he comes They're out really without They're really just shell, like yeah, wet, and it's, the, it's all yeah. like... Mm-hmm. Did anybody think Zoidberg died? No. no. I mean... Okay, good. Oh, with the shell? I didn't. Yeah. I didn't either. <laughs> 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 and, and, and it... It ends up paying off in a really great joke later in the episode. When the towel falls off? No, just no, just chaps. just Zoidberg losing his sh- shell in in general. But we will come to that in the ep- in this episode. Yes, oh, in this okay. episode. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was great. I, I like seeing um, the professor start crying. You know, like oh, he was always so full of life, and I was waiting for that that uh, like professor. I was waiting for a joke after that, like. Uh, let's get rid of him or something like that or yeah. whatever. And then he didn't get a chance to. It was when Zoeberg came in, like, why with all the crying? And, yeah. Uh, and his towel and his wet, sticky noises. Like, I mean, it, it was getting cramped in there, so I molted. Why not? <laughs> did he? Uh, did his search for a new shell confound your need for things to be anatomically correct? Because, like, why wouldn't he just kind of form a new shell? No, 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 no. I, I, um, it, we'll get to it. <laughs> We'll get to it. Yeah, let's we'll get, get to it. Because he's not let's, a hermit crab. No, it's, it's add, way... It's let's way, be at it right now. It's way down at the end of the you episode. You and me are going to be at it. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um, I, the, number one, the name of the device that's charging Amy's phone, the cellmate. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I, was, oh, I didn't even notice that. What oh, yeah. was it supposed... I mean, so her cell phone was like this tiny, tiny thing, mm-hmm. but then the battery um, thing was very uh, huge. Like the charger? Compar- the charger, yeah. but it was like, was that referencing something? Because this would have been pre-iPhone and everything, but like, was there a point where they kept making the phones 
It, oh, yeah. it reminded so me of my dad. So much smaller, but then the chargers would have to be massive for my it. My dad's flip phone, when I don't know how old I was, but I, well over 10 years ago, like it was a whole like cradle thing, I remember, that you had to put the phone. It was basically the same size as the phone. Yeah, I kind of remember those. I uh, think... Uh, I think it's... They had those for the Zach Morris phones and the car phones, too. Right. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. But this is, like, okay, this is, like, 2001. So, I mean, there's... What I think it is, I mean, small... Phones kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And there's a funny, like, uh, meme on the internet where it's, like... Is that where memes are? As opposed to the memes on the front page of the New York Times... Yes, at because the those are... Just wait. They're coming. On, on display. Those are sad and depressing. <laughs> those are called headlines. <laughs> those are just headlines and pictures. It's called Treason Today. Yeah. No, there's just like a graph of like years and then the phone like models get smaller and smaller and smaller and then it's like porn can be on a phone and then they get bigger and bigger, oh, and, bigger and bigger. But yeah, I mean, I think the joke is... Phones were could get they would try to get them as small as possible. Yeah, that but was then a, the joke was that like, like yeah, successful guys. We just made that joke funnier by explaining it. That's what well, that's what well, podcast is. is. <laughs> we have, he have asked, you you obviously haven't listened to this podcast, uh, Risa. <laughs> so you've already <laughs> lied to us. I have. I listened to it when I was getting tattoos. Did you listen to the one that your husband was on or a different I one? I did. I've listened to a couple. I Does he make other people listen to that when he's got them in his chair? No, he uh, subjects them to political rants that he can almost bet they're going to disagree with him on, but he has them (laughs) like trapped, basically. He's talked about the Brillo case. Uh, He started talking about something else with... He tattoos a whole bunch of uh, a family that works for like a construction company. Oh dear! And he he started going off onto something. Anytime he comes home, and says, "So I had a conversation with my one cost. It's it never works out <laughs> well because they can't do anything. No, yeah. he's got an electric needle pointed at uh, their skin. Huh? Sometimes in it, yeah. he's inside of them. So. I- she has a tiny cell phone. It's in the big charter. That's mm-hmm. that's the joke, the disparate difference. Um, and she's complaining to uh, Leela that she keeps getting a call from a giant squeeze ball. Uh, and what? A giant squeeze ball. Mm-hmm. Which at I, that rate, like, the number would have shown up. Like, for any cell phone, the number would have shown up in 2001. Yeah, I mean, everybody had. Known. Calling from a spaceship, though. That's true. That's unlisted, if anything. Unavailable. Yeah. And it's a government spaceship, so it's probably a block number. Well, you don't even know that her phone necessarily had a readable display being as small as it was. True. It, it might have been too like hard a, to see. Like yeah, a talk that's button true. or something. I don't know. The point is, after a year, she wasn't you know, motivated enough to figure out where it was coming from. Uh, all the times that Kiff, like him calling her, and then uh, I, I, when they're at the restaurant later and all that, like his... Uh, the way he acts, it, it, Tom can attest to this more than anybody. That's um, pretty close to how I act if I'm uh, talking to a girl that I am interested in. I, it, it almost would calls you agree back, with that, Tom? Uh, will you stammer when you talk to everybody, though? Thank yeah, God! True. Thank God for text messages. <laughs> like that's all I can is, say. Where people that... like me can can be remember like everyone you, else. Remember when you had to call a home phone oh. of a girl you liked, and then you get their parents. And, and then they yeah. try and be cute and be like Grand Central Station, and they just paralyze with like I can't. I, I ghosted. Then on I would a dude pronounce that way the, once. Yeah, I, you oh yeah, I ghosted on a dude that oh, way yeah. once where it was just a. That was the nice part because it was I'm not home. Tell him I'm not home, and then I didn't have to talk to him. Did did okay so. Uh, the three Those of were us, the days, you know. The three of us here are rarely on the. Uh, just to not answer your home phone, and it's like. Nobody knows. There's nobody gets mad at you when you like when you get a text and you don't get a text back. It's like you you know I sent it. What are you gonna say? My phone was off or whatever. I got read receipts on and shit. Oh, That's read. why you never turn read receipts on. So That's, I got Android. The you don't know, bitch. The three of us are rarely on the receiving end of like creepy creepers. <laughs> um, I imagine you've probably had your share over the years. No lewd phone calls. So, I'll but that that, but that's almost something where. Wish I mean, now they're now you get I, as as I read in the papers. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Like I read now that you get like dick pics and things if you're a, mm. a, a female out there with an internet presence, you know, solicited or not. You just kind of get like piles of genitals in your phone. <laughs> but but that's one picture. They're just in luckily, a pile. <laughs> but has that has that? <laughs> All right. So here's the thing. So, to answer your question that you didn't quite get to, uh, I've been with my husband for seven years, yeah, so not yeah, yeah. quite. I. 
personally, I tend to hop relationships. So like I didn't really get into that too much. And thank God I never had to do anything like online dating or something because I, I don't have the patience. Oh. I, I just wonder um, the that whole like heavy breathing phone call thing. Is that still a thing that happens? And how often did it actually happen like back in the day? Like it, it almost seems like a very antiquated perversion. Did you ever see, um, I think it's a, it's a Todd Solon's movie called Happiness? Yeah. And, and Philip Seymour, because Philip Seymour Hoffman. The guy and, yeah. But Philip Seymour Hoffman like, was doing that to Jane Adams in the movie. He'd call her up and, and he'd be like, you know, mm-hmm. it, it was, I mean, it's a Todd Solon's movie, so it gets darker than you'd ever want it to it's and like, kind of gross on top of that. Don't, just don't like, watch it. If you're happiness? At, it's a, yeah. Yes. That, that movie? If you're, oh my God. No. Okay. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying like, I, and the reason I bring it up, because I was revolted by it, but just the You're supposed that, to be. That's that the, heavy you know. breathing, like jacking off on the phone, caller unsolicited. Like, how often did that really happen in the past? Does it still happen? Because when people don't have landlines, I mean, like, I guess you could just text dick pics to random numbers or something. But basically, everybody's got caller ID in their pocket and stuff. So Pete, it's it's a. Uh, although I will say, maybe the version of that there was one night. I don't know how many years ago at Corky's where they were doing a uh, karaoke roulette or it was like chat roulette, oh, yeah. but on the TV behind uh, where people were doing karaoke. Oh, and so yeah. he just had it pulled up and it would just randomly go. And whoever got pulled up, like would see and random what do you say, drunk like people 70%, doing karaoke. It was just going to so dick many dicks, dick, dick, so dick. many dicks, some, some kids laughing dick. I like when it was yes. a guy with his dick out. And then most of the time they'd be like, "Oh shit," and flip it. Yeah. And if they, if that it was didn't a whole happen, bar full of people, they'd be expecting, you know, as they're flipping through probably a lot of dicks or whatever, waiting for some girl. Then they get to like the one and go like, "What? Oh, oh no!" <laughs> and that, like, or just start laughing because they're yeah. like, "Oh, there's a there's a bar full of people singing uh, Total Eclipse of the Heart." You know? <laughs> right. Like, yeah, that was a good night. That was yeah. a good time. But uh, it's I don't know necessarily about the phone, but I remember working in a coffee shop on Shaker Square where uh, we had a dude that would stand outside the window and jerk it. That's it's just so weird. I, it's that was his thing. I mean, he got arrested. That was also his yeah. thing. But I think it takes a special kind of person. Yeah, look, guys are creepy, and they'll mm-hmm. whatever the technology changes, like they'll continue to find a so the bait way. the bait and switch gag here is that the joke of Amy me. receiving these heavy breathing calls made me wonder a how often did heavy breathing calls really occur out in the wild? B, have heavy breathing calls been replaced by unsolicited dick pics? C, is there yet a third perversion that the heavy breathing calls have morphed into that we are not aware of? D, none of the above. <laughs> what we're all really trying to ask is that... Axe. Axe? Yes. yes. That's if, called what a we're all, we're all trying we to ask right now... about that if you want. Really, men who call too much, are they the worst? It sounds like a, a quiz for Cosmo or something. Well, that's I, mean, line, uh, I don't know, because this is coming Leela from... asked that. This is, this is coming uh, from some. She did. Um, this is coming from someone who uh, gave her number to the person she is now married to months before uh, he admitted that he had it and got the text message that I sent to him. And then when he gave me his number <laughs> later, it was the same damn number. And I was like, you fucker, that was the same thing. And it- Listeners, just so you know, we're recording this on Valentine's yeah. Day. Happy and Valentine's that's, Day. That's the, that's the, the secret history For the of first Teresa time we're gonna and former guest his, Eric Kaplan. His <laughs> episode numbers decrease somehow. <laughs> People are going to take back yeah. listening yeah, to it. What a, what a jerk. <laughs> I'm spending Valentine's we Day We hate him Pete. worse than that other guy. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. uh, you know, he keeps trying to call and he, he hangs up. Uh, and then he finally gives up and then he, he starts, you know, crying. And then uh, Zaff walks in <laughs> and he's like, hey, what, what, what's the line? He's like, uh, I need a restroom attendant. <laughs> And he, he's like, "What? Well, it looks like you're crying like a woman. And, uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Like, it looks like you're crying like a woman. I've always considered myself a, somewhat of a role model to some of my more pathetic men. <laughs> it just, it, well, just Kip's whole, his whole persona is, <laughs> you know, where it's, it's really just like, he's such a... Uh, weenie? Yeah. Yeah, it's really... L7 I mean, it's, weenie. It, it's an interesting... Uh, 
when him and Amy end up being sort of paired off with each other. That's the twist. Well, it, it happens. I mean, it happened before, really. So yeah, this is yeah. just like a continuation. Well, he tells the story, yeah. and did you notice that Bender in he that throws story the, throws the necklace out from, the movie? from yeah. that Titanic oh, from the episode? episode. <laughs> Which is kind of from the movie, too, the, you know. Because it was fake. Necklace. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I love Zap's negotiation of a double date. Uh, so Kip explains to him that he's in love with the girl, and he's like, <laughs> just starts laughing and says, that's rich. And then, you know, then he explains the whole thing to him, and Zap's like, mm-hmm, uh-huh, I've, 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 spin- I've finished talking, sir. <laughs> and then he looks over at the uh, wall, and he sees the newspaper clipping from when the Titanic yeah. episode happened. He's like, or he says, I, I met her. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you're, you're, the Titanic. Your Amy like, knows my Leela. But before that, he's like, he's like, I re- when you crashed that uh, ship, I remember it was in all the papers. And then uh, he's like, oh, you're, oh, go ahead, Teresa, you were going to say it. Well, he looks at the newspaper clip did. and, Where's well, that? I talked over it. So <laughs> your n- Amy knows now, my Leela. Now, as a man, I'm giving you a woman a chance to speak. I've decided that <laughs> my speaking part portion is over and I've made the, the decision being the decider. We're to trying to make this episode extra romantic. <laughs> That's the butt light really adds to that. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we made you the sensual salad. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Zap's line about the most sensual part of a, or whatever boobies. But honestly, <laughs> if I like the word you left out of that was just woman. That was the only word you left out. I you remember leave the boobies. woman out. Of course. Uh, no. So anyways, I'll oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? No, Teresa just is here to shut all of us down. Oh, yeah, no, good. That's <laughs> why it's what I do. I'm happy to have you And here it's for awesome. That. Did, wait, did uh, one of you guys bring your book of personal pickup lines? Just start <laughs> rattling them off at her. But just don't even stop. Just start saying them over and without a, without a break until one sticks. If I said you had a beautiful body, would you take your pants off and dance around a little? Because <laughs> that is a really good pickup line. Because it starts somewhere I've seen it work and doesn't for, I've go. seen it work for you at the bar. And then we had to call the cops. Because that dude <laughs> took off his pants and took started his pants dancing around. After Tom, he asked me. <laughs> I know. Tom's all about misleads when he hits on girls. Hey, nice shoes. They'd look really good on my ass. You know? <laughs> I thought you were gonna say, Are they my size? Oh, nice. He gives him he gives him that book that you know you're you guys were saying the lines from. Uh he offers it to him when they're walking in because Kip has the flowers and he's like, I forget what he says like about candy the flowers. And, and then he has the candy. He's like, candy is for dorks. And he mm. takes the candy and then he eats it. And then, uh, or, you know, vice versa. It might have been the other way around. Um, he then stole he gives the, him the flowers. Book. Yeah, he stole the flowers and he gave him the book. He's like, here's They're a- daffodils. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so far the most used flower on uh, Futurama. Cause Why? Because Bender says, bite my shiny. It doesn't, but It's one of his words. He, where he says, bite my shiny mm-hmm. daffodil ass. Do you remember that with the- um, I do. Mm-hmm. So that's it, daffodils keep coming up. I guess that's um, th- that was on the episode that is going to air tomorrow. It's funny how that always ties back to things. The episode that airs tomorrow, yeah, yeah the, the, the one that's going to. Oh, one the one his, that's yeah. One well, of I mean, top ten words. T- tomorrow to you and me, but somebody listening to this, it'll be three weeks ago. So, oh, you know, we so we're well, coming be from the Day future. Yeah, we're talking. Do you have anything to, else uh, that you want to tell me about? While we're people we're are talking listening? to Cody in Mississippi, who was calling us from the past this week. We're talking to you from the future, and so far we have not imploded. So take that, Buster. And uh, you know, Lucky. Uh, also, this is the episode with Morbo singing "Funky Town," which someone else yeah, had, had the... messaged us about mm-hmm. this week. I didn't know that was a real thing, and it was glorious. Because you hadn't watched the episode yet, so somebody right. mentioned that, and you were, "Oh, that was cool. It was like cool." You saw that, and you're like, "Okay." And then yeah, you well, that. I saw that, and I'm like, "That sounds great to me." And then I saw it for real. I in didn't real even life. realize that that we were going to be doing this episode, and I was just like, "Oh, that's that's random." And then watch it, and I'm like, "Oh, that's this episode." Somebody messaged us or tweeted at us or something about uh, Morbo singing "Funky Town," and I was like, "Yeah, I remember that." Then I was watching. They this, sent and a I'm telegram. Like, oh, <laughs> they sent a, a carrier pigeon. pigeon. Yeah. Yeah. They they uh, grinded. Um... <laughs> <laughs> they sent a stray dog over and it pooped it out of its butt in Morse code. They put the message in and then it came out of uh, Teresa's dog's butt, sexier. Yeah, Pete, four times as sexy. Did you get the velour fog reference <laughs> to uh, Mel Torme, the velvet fog? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good you job. got that too, Teresa. See. Si. Did you get that? I had to look it up. I had to look it up. Oh. Do you do you know what show Mel Torme frequently guested on in the eighties? A show uh, was it a sitcom? Yeah. Or he was on everything in the nineties. Well, After he did that unplugged show with uh, 
all the the young kids at that time or whatever, it was on every TV show. Like every time they needed like a musician or crooner guy. Do you remember that? Teresa, how like it was just like every sitcom they'd be he like, and we got Mel Torme. Hey, I would, Mel. I would. Night Court. Was I it would, Night Court? It was Night Court. Yes. Because Harry <laughs> Anderson was obsessed with Mel Torme, so he would frequently ah, show up, and yeah, I think yeah. he was. It, whatever revival he sort of had, I think you could credit that's entirely definitely to Night where Court. that started for sure, for sure. Yeah, um, he seemed like he was a good sport. He's still alive, isn't he? No, no, <laughs> shit. Mm. I, I oh, mean, I, I don't know, but yeah, he, I hope he is. Somebody was listening and was uh, as excited as I sounded <laughs> saying that, and was just like, "Oh, great! Oh, oh. felt that like I, I'm pretty disappointed but, right now." But that, so that was the beautiful part about it is is that being a Captain Kirk analog when he starts singing, it. <laughs> I mean, it's all a la William Shatner that was and his psychedelic freakout records from the 70s. I was totally into that song until he said Leela instead of Lola. <laughs> and that's where it ruined it for me. <laughs> you were all like, oh, this is a great recording. I would buy an album of this. Um, well, and the I, best I is he's singing really about a woman who's a man. That's what, yeah, I love that. Um, I, is that I, a callback to his, his date? Um, I think it could be. Was what was uh, oh damn it? What was his date's name in the ten fifteen to Nutley episode? Was that was that the last Valentine's Day episode where Fry? Yeah, it was the Valentine's uh, Day episode. Yeah, Fry is on. Um, That's uh, put your head on my shoulders. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god! So this wasn't a Valentine's Day episode, was it? No, it aired ten days before Valentine's Day, though. I'm s- February fourth. I keep feeling there's a lot of synchronicity going on with this episode, and it's starting to freak me out. You're, have you have you been watching The Secret? Uh, you're 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 picking up uh, a lot of uh, like just callbacks and uh, things that happen as the Nerd show stuff. goes on. Yeah, but there's there's coincidences where we talk about daffodils and then like that episode is airing tomorrow, and then the uh, the Morbo Funky Town thing. And I haven't been watching The Secret. I have been watching The Notebook. Uh, the amount of money that we've paid Gene There's and no Chuck, serendipity it's all paying off now. So Tree. we've we've gotten we're in with the Bilderberg Group. Good yeah. story, bro. Good story, bro. Teresa, uh, sing it like sing it like uh, William Shatner. Good story, bro. Uh, are you familiar with that that William Shatner bit? Yeah. Where he's, oh God, yeah. That there's like a bunch of That's Star awesome. Trek stuff in this episode. The whole the planet they're on, that whole everything with the Amazonians is very much based off of this. You saw that on the Infosphere, right? This old old Trek episode, um, that something the Ar- Return of the Archons or something like that. Uh, have you ever seen any of the other ones besides Rocket Man, where William Shatner sings? Have you seen like multiple? Because like they're all like I, that, and they're yeah. all great. That's who's good who's question. is better or worse, Shatner's or Nimoy's? Shatner's. Uh, I just watched um, the. Oh, well, okay, but that was a that was sort of a two part question. Well, which is better? Which is better and which is worse? Is Shatner the best, or is Shatner not as good as... I said, which is better, or worse, Shatner or Nimoy, and you just said Shatner. You t- said which Be- one is Shatner worse. Shatner is better or worse. Shatner is worse. Than and Nimoy. Then, yeah, okay. let me, let me okay. explain why. No, that's... Uh, I, I just watched the def, uh, the documentary on Netflix, the... Um, oh, that Spock. Spock. Yeah, yeah. That, where that his son made or whatever, that yeah. they started making together, and then he died, and then... He finished. It's really good if you get a chance. It's not great, but it's it's pretty good. And there's a whole section about maybe you guys in the could be friends with his son. 70s where uh, Adam Nimoy, yeah, where uh, he, uh, it, the albums that he made, like um, Leonard Nimoy, like because kind of you all have dead dads. Star I mean. Trek. Oh, oh, and then uh, and r- around the same time, sort of ish. You know, um, no, actually, it's like a year difference. Uh, anyway, so there's a section about um, <laughs> when he would put out records and. Leonard Nimoy was like doing this kind of Donovan esque like folk stuff, like the Ballad of Bilbo and, Baggins. No, that's the thing. That is the song that everybody thinks of. You, Therese, you've seen that video, right? The the, the Hobbit song. Yeah, it's like this yeah, hilarious '60s okay. video, like psychedelic, weird. It wasn't weird, meant to be funny. It weird um, H and R Puffin stuff kind of looking video. Right. Um, but he put out all these albums, and like I just you know heard bits of them, and they're like legitimate, uh, sincere. Like he's trying to like be a musician, and not because. Uh, Here's here's my point is he did that and then when Star Trek got big that's when Shatner was like I'm gonna do some albums too to get some more money and like that was and he had no music like N- Nimoy was interested in music and like mm-hmm. if he wasn't being an actor or whatever he probably would have done that anyway when he wasn't hunting for Bigfoot or the Bermuda Triangle yeah. <laughs> or 
UFOs uh, or Stonehenge. But and that's the thing. I mean, he did everything. And it was all. It was all just because he just was like, "I'm interested in this. I'm going to do that." He's you know, a the Loch Ness monster. But that was a thing with. Um, to my point is Shatner's bad albums and his, his bad music is that he was like. Well, Nimoy's doing music, and anybody can... be famous? Yeah, and uh, he, well, he was already famous. He's like, oh, how else I, can I well, get another box? At what point stop did Shatner stop yeah, being he was dying off, yeah. <laughs> Why did Zap take his shirt buttons off when he was doing that song? Extra sexy. Yeah, just, you know. Was that a reference oh, to William my, Shatner, vi- Visually, though? it might have been. Uh, like, they... The dancing was. Well, so oh, yeah, yeah. I, I asked this a couple minutes ago in, in the fray. At what point did Shatner... Stop being reviled because he was a fucking joke Never. forever. No, Never. He's... no, that's not true. The, he was not taken seriously as TJ Hooker. He was certainly not taken seriously as the host of Rescue Nine One One. Like his his career always kind of had an ironic bent to it. And then at it's like at Nostalgia. some point at some point he got in on the joke. Nostalgia. That's you think that's, it's just nostalgia? I think it yeah. Because Teresa... then it's like the spoken word stuff is funny because it's terrible. Um, his time on Star Trek, it was the people who find him amusing are no longer, or they're not old enough to know that he was a dick. Okay. Yeah. I, that would be my take on it because so be... everything just was no, the I, album I with Ben Folds. Before or after the change, or was it a? I think that was after. I think that's why that happened. Is what you're saying is that he realized that people see him as a buffoon. Here's the thing, I like Teresa. I think you're right. I also think that he's like you know you know when you have like a like a ham dad that like makes bad jokes and everybody laughs. And I don't know anything him, about that. <laughs> and then he realizes uh, at some point. That no, tell me more. That. He doesn't get why he's a buffoon, like he's, but he knows that he's gonna get attention and paid and whatever he's if he Zap plays that. Yeah, exactly. What? Like, yeah, well, yeah. So we we kind of skipped over the whole dinner thing, which was a, uh, it's a horrible a great mess. Point, Pete. It's a horrible mess. I mean, that's where we got to see the um, the you know it was the uh, the pickup lines and stuff were during the dinner, but there was a whole yeah, like, negotiation we, you know, between Zap and Leela. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think Kiff eats. No, he uh, goes to order and he's like, okay. he's like, Kiff, this is a very expensive <laughs> restaurant. And then he orders like two, two steaks. steaks or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, two sensual, se- sensual salads. salads and with extra sensual so- um, salad dressing for the, for the <laughs> ladies and uh, a bottle of wine, half a bottle of wine. Uh, and some uh, oysters on the half shell, uh, uh, quarter shell, and et cetera. Then, so then Zap starts singing, clears the restaurant. Well, Kip starts singing first. Yeah. Uh, he's he, singing, he a beautiful re- rendition of Total Eclipse yeah. of the Heart. It's true. I Heartfelt. love that song. Yeah, it's a great song. But um, I, this, is the, this is one of the things it's I don't understand. Vampire. Is it? Yeah. I don't. Whatever. It's about vampire love. Is it? Mm. Oh, yeah. Really? Leela and Amy have spent time around both Kiff and Zap. So I mm-hmm. it was kind of a stretch for me to see them be like, I can't believe what an asshole Kiff is. Like they know him not to be that way. Leela especially, because there was the point where uh Kiff and, and Zap were working on the Planet Express and Leela was, was angry from the moment he called them. How at she... Zap. At Zap. Yeah. But they were both they were oh, like it's at Kiff. They were oh, treating Kiff at like they had to know that Kiff was not the jackass that Zap was. I don't even think Amy remembered the Titanic episode until Kiff brought it up. Like <laughs> that's any possible. Of the thing. I don't think she comprehends. She is like, kinda in her own, you know. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, you could see like her being. She's, you know, uh, uh, and Leela was self-centered. just self-centered. Lila was just kind of focused on on humiliating and rebuffing all of Zap's advances. So a fair and play. And it's kind of a turnoff if it's like just Kiff being a weenie. Like he's he not. A, he's, he was trying to be alpha. He was. Eh, he was being a weenie alpha. Yeah. The whole like, he had no <laughs> confidence. No right. confidence. None. Zero. He was nervous. He got. He gets. True. He gets knock kneed around pretty girls. What are you gonna do? Well, it was the whole thing. It wasn't until they were uh, met with a you know strife and catastrophe that he was like, "Well, okay, I'm gonna die." And then that's when he wins. He her sang over before later. that, though. That's true. He did, but I mean, that was this whole. Th- but that was this whole thing. Is he was, uh, you know, yeah, that's true. So he, he made an effort, you a know. Bit. Then and then he, he got was, bulldozed. He was taking Zap's advice, so like you know him. 
all the initiatives he kept taking or all the initiatives I didn't he kept think he taking was taking was, the advice. I thought it was Zap was goading him into doing it as his commanding officer. Well, he didn't make him say pick up lines. He just yeah, he's he just like, blanked and that was like I don't remember of... him like telling him to do it. He was just like use this and don't stop saying them no matter what or whatever. I mean, he might not have even known how horrible those pickup lines were. He could have uh, you know. He he wasn't guessed. he was realizing it as he was reading them. He looked <laughs> as surprised as everyone else. And Amy was totally into when he was singing on karaoke, yeah. but then mm-hmm. Zap took over. Amateur hour is over. Yeah. Or whatever he said. <laughs> and then everyone <laughs> ran away be- and went into the skate pods. But if you really want Gravity wanna- won again. It's true. If you really want to pick it apart, though, Kiff kind of, like, he's a weenie mm-hmm. in the sense that he's compared to Zap, but he's not entirely male. What do you mean, not entirely? He gets knocked up when he and Amy have babies. Yeah, but he's Spoilers. still a male species, though. I mean, he is, yeah, oh. Yeah. No, nobody. I don't know whatever. what happens. Well, now you do. I guess. Yeah. Are we bringing Same. up what is male and female right now, Teresa? <laughs> no, but it's more yeah. gender norms. Yeah, you, let's you say. binary. Uh, Are uh, we going to deconstruct these gender, gender constructs? Norms. norms. <laughs> like on Cheers? <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> there's so many gender ambiguities on Cheers. Well, Rhea Perlman. <laughs> this has a great line in it. She dances. A zap line where. Uh, He's trying to steer the restaurant. I it. just mean that she has a real masculine energy. I think she's a really funny, talented lady. Oh yeah, hell yeah, dude, she was great. That's all. And the dancing episode is one of the best. How how sad were you when her and Danny DeVito split up I, for just I, a little bit? I, 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 it, it was it was it was like it was the, crushing. I, I was I, yeah. I'm honestly not sure if I was more upset about that or 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 Thurston Moore and um. I, and you and know Kim, what. Thurston Moore <laughs> seems like kind of a dick. Bastard. Oh, I'm sure he is. <laughs> I'm sure he is. But it's a thing where, like, when there's... Uh, actually, no, more with Danny DeVito and Rhea, Rhea Perlman, because it's like, oh... Uh, Neither one of them could ever be with anybody else. I know. I, that's, it's, that's not true. <laughs> but then they reconciled. But it's she the got first back thing together I with Trollfoot. Of, of course, you know. It's true. And Kim you know, Gordon just went on to, like, better things. Side note, Kim Gordon has... Quite possibly the sexiest speaking voice ever. Ever. Wow, just, I'll just let her know. Noted. Just <laughs> if if for some reason this happens to get to her, I just like if you listen to an interview with her like that that WTF she did, it's just it's such a kick ass, strong and and smooth, and it's it's a very just like you mean the, the singer from the legendary band? She has a good voice. I'm not I'm not <laughs> no, I'm not talking about her singing voice. Which which fit Sonic Youth, that's fine. I'm just saying that like the tone of her just conversational speaking voice is really, really pleasant. It's no and Sam nice. Elliott. So that brings up good. It's it's maybe it's good maybe conversation the, right now, actually, <laughs> because it is Valentine's Day. So out of anyone ever, I think if Pete had to pick someone's voice a, to get married to, maybe Kim Gordon's speaking Kim voice. Kim Gordon or just in general. Tom Orchie, Selleck. what about you? Oh. oh. Okay. Tom Speaking Selleck. He could read the Speaking phone voice? book. Just, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. right He's now, like, off the top of your head, one person, one celebrity that you would have to voice. be. Speaking voice. Speaking voice-wise. Uh, the first thing I thought of uh, makes me feel, I, I would feel terrible and creepy no matter who Rhea I said. Rhea Perlman. That's not my. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Emma Watson. It's huh. the accent. I, I huh. you know. Yeah, that's a good that's one. That's fair. That is a very good one. It, off of the top of my head, obviously I'd have a different answer Tom. and more age appropriate. Uh, She's an adult now. I know, but that's still, you know. How old is she? Is she just like 20? She's like 24, 22. Uh, I, I, bet she's, I bet she's I bet she's closer to 30 than you think actually, she is. Actually, you're probably right. You're old, half plus half your age plus seven. The first, and above. Harry, the first Harry Potter came out when I was in college, and I'm talking like eight. 1920 or something like that. not 1920 19, <laughs> i was 19 or 20 years 19 old dickety so, two. <laughs> so like w- how old is she in that movie like eight or ten or something like that so add since 2000 or 2001 you know add she was born in years. 1990 she's 27 years old yeah all right i don't feel too super creepy it's You're creepy no matter old? what 35 half your age plus seven that's exact. That's, it, you wait. That, are you? Are you? That's what makes me feel way less creepy. Is that up. old rule that somebody came up with on the Voice hold Channel or whatever? Up. It's yeah, not, no, are you it's, suggesting an eight-year age difference is creepy? <laughs> is that the difference? Eight years? I didn't yeah. do the math. <laughs> He's is that your guys's? Difference? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna high-five your husband <laughs> the next time I see him. 
It's uh, my mom gave me some old like drawings and whatnot the last time. Well, we were there on Sunday, and uh, I had one that said I had learned my phone number. It was mm-hmm. like a little certificate that you get and whatever. And I showed him. I like, said, I was what in did, high school. Yeah, I said, what were you doing in 1991? Because I learned my phone number. Did, so, uh, drinking and fucking. He, you know. Well, he wasn't fucking at 14. Man, if you guys could go back that to much the I know to the early 90s and give some of these great jokes to. Uh, this topic to, to some, <laughs> you know, some some difference between. Hey, well, what's tell what's how come uh, when a when a, a younger uh, woman dates an, uh, or a younger man dates an older woman, but uh, like, what? Wait, what's the, what's the butt have to do with I, it? No, I just blew in the middle of. Right. You know, Are we getting into butt stuff now? Ooh. No, I'm trying to get us out of this. Like, to be fair, you could assume that neither Kiff nor uh, Zap are wearing pants throughout the entire episode. Do you do this see or underwear? Well, yeah, this come up before. I didn't even answer my question that I asked, though. I said, Tom, I'm watch Tom did you answer the question? I didn't know. I didn't get to answer it. You I asked know. me, and then you guys went off on a tangent. We ignored well, you. Well, we would have let you answer, Tom, but. I didn't do that on purpose, but I wish I had. I'm not. No, now it's too late because no, it's, it's all not. getting cut out. Who? Jenna Coleman. She oh, from Doctor Who. was from Doctor Who. The latest. Yeah. I'm sorry. So we both went with British, British uh, women. Yeah. British women. Just yes. her voice. She yes. has a, yeah, she's an awesome voice. Slightly in a tie, Marissa Tomei from My Cousin Vinny. Ooh. Marissa Tomei. I'll, I'll get in, that. Any accent. Yeah. It wasn't that a, she's her a, regular voice. She's in a movie with My John C. Riley. Isn't that a particularly Netflix, shrill character, though, from My Cousin Cousin Vinny? It depends on who no. you ask. Tom doesn't think so. I don't. Yeah, I mean, she no, like, no, the like movie's Long which Island. Which is fine. You're, opinion, you're allowed to have that. Is it thing. called uh, oh, Stereotypical is it, Long Island a- it's accent? It, is it Cyrus? Cyrus? What? The movie with her and John C. Riley and. Uh, yes. Oh, she's his mom. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. She's still beautiful. She plays oh, Spider Man's yeah. new aunt in the, yeah, in the movie that's coming out. She's in the, the youngest uh, aunt his, May in the world. His new aunt, like uh, like Spider Man, really, was like I'm gonna. He shipped off. He's like, <laughs> she's like, really aunt probably May, the same age aunt. as Aunt May He's when Spider-Man. the character was created. It's just that <laughs> in, in 1960, when you were 45, you I sent like away for a new Uncle Ben a while ago. He hasn't gotten here yet for some reason. Tom Hardy shows up <laughs> as the new aunt. <laughs> sure, I'd still watch it. Is this the reveal where Bender? Uh, announces he's Mexican. Yes, I he is Mexican, so. I but I don't like know it if it's up the new one. This. <laughs> It'd be hard if you remember because you watch, you know, all of them whenever. Like I just, I, yeah. you know, I was watching in order. I feel and like if it came up before, to we would have mentioned that because yeah. you know, right. uh, Zoidberg's, um, you know, oh, the new, shell, new catalog. shell, the shell catalog, the, the B story in this episode, like this, like you, you, Teresa, you asked for this, um, you, 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 you asked for this. Uh, Episode specifically because it's one of your favorites, right? I like Amazons. It it comes up as number two. Why is that? <laughs> it comes up as number two is it because boobies are the most erotic part of a woman. You flipped it. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah. You need to create the suspense. <laughs> Uh, it comes up as number two on uh, some list or whatever of best future dramas. So it's, it's considered one of the, it's one of my favorites. It's one of my top mm. five, top ten, whatever. It's one of the best ones. If it was just the A story, it would totally be the same. Uh, and the B story could have been anything, but it just it being a uh, totally throwaway, it just funny. Yeah. But it's Zoidberg, super great Zoidberg moments, and then it, the B story part of it kind of shifts into the A because then. Uh, and let's admit, Fry and, it's not Hermes heavy, so it's funnier. Yeah, yeah. but when Hermes shows up, it's he's it's mean good. and funny. Yeah. yeah, he's really mean. Oh, in this, Zoidberg. oh yeah. yeah. Well, that's some of the best Zoidberg moments. Like they're all mean to him, but Hermes is just Awful. extra mean to yeah. him. Yeah, you know. Well, the, 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 so he has the bandito shell. Then he has like the leather daddy shell. This which one is... looks like a summer guy. <laughs> is that what he said? <laughs> yeah. But Did he I say kinda, something about macho or something? The, the generic shell I kind of liked. Like just the, the white with the barcode on it. It looks like your, uh, your lottery league bands thing. A little bit. Yeah. I, I mean, there's definitely a, a, a similarity there, but just the, it, it's almost like, that's one of those jokes that I don't know if it even would carry forward if you didn't remember that stuff because like do you remember 80s like gene- like like Repo Man is classic for the joke where it's like everything's generic there's a generic beard it's just white with like black lettering and a barcode on it like st- in the intervening I don't know I thought everybody but you're right maybe in the intervening years it's like even the store brand stuff is dolled up to look like it's 
brand name, you know, if you go to Giant Eagle and buy a box of cornflakes, like it looks like a box of cornflakes. It's just a little off. Even Kirkland beer has like a look to it. Yeah, yeah. Whereas 20 years ago, I mean, it was probably a joke that was just on the cusp of being past its prime back then, but I really appreciated it because it, it I mean, he, he looked like, he kind of looked badass. Like, you know, that was, if they'd done an episode like that with Zoidberg as generic Zoidberg, that would have been like, or even the rest of this episode, well, where before he got found his, that where shell, he found a new shell. <laughs> he just wearing that one, yeah. When having he puts more his old in one. it, but he wasn't in it much, just like Hermes. Uh, so before we we got to the B story, um, before it cut to that, there was the Zap taking over, and he says that you know she um, handles like a steakhouse, or she f- she f- what she, is it? Uh, she handles like a steakhouse, but or no, she she she's, looks like a steakhouse, but she flies built, like a she's bistro. built like a steakhouse. Is that what flies you said? like a bistro? Then, yeah, but handles like a bistro. Like a bistro. Yeah. She is built like a steakhouse, but okay. she handles like a bistro. Is she, the exact quote. She's built like a steakhouse, <laughs> but handles like a bistro. I thought we were just gonna all keep you're, saying you're referring it. Like, <laughs> you're referring to um, the Palm de Orbit, yeah, yes. which, which is another one of those nice uh, punny Little, yeah. restaurant names like the Hip Joint from yeah, way yeah. back in yeah. episode two, maybe. That oh weird um, bug creature probably had to pay a little bit more for his coat check because that sign oh, yeah, said the 25 extra cents extra, yeah. or anything over nine arms. It reminded <laughs> me of your like rule. Tom, do you want to tell <laughs> yes. Oh, that, that thing. Do you, There's a lot of things in that future that break my leg do you, rule. Do you want to go wanna, ahead and tell us? Sorry. What's your leg rule? I don't trust you, anything that has less than two legs or more than four legs. Do you want to tell us the exact amount that he had to pay extra for his coat? I thought you wrote it I down. I don't know. It was, no, it was like 20 cents per... extra per... It was a dollar twenty five extra. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was, it was something that they're... Um, I just, I missed that whole... The centipede guy? Yeah. Yeah, I missed it too. It was only when I was reading the Infosphere that I saw it. I, uh, like, I know I've, I've seen that joke. I didn't... I, it was one of those where I looked away. It's one of those really fast visual jokes where it's like if you, you know, look down to, um, to you know... Uh, Make a note? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Or, like, um, uh, cover up a dead body or whatever you're doing while you're watching Futurama. Um, you still tweet about any- Trump. You yeah. haven't done anything <laughs> with, uh, with your dad's yet. Yeah. Um, it's I, expensive. Didn't, okay. I didn't get still in the living room. I didn't room. get the alligator to put him in. Yet, like, uh, <laughs> Tom dead. Um, <laughs> I, I, does the ticking keep you awake at night? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I, so the floor he's, <laughs> he's steering the, uh, um, that was a hook reference, right? Or I mean, Peter Pan. The ticking, yeah. yeah. We just we, oh, we, we I made like a four Edgar Allan Poe reference. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's why I wanted you were, to. You were doing a callback to. to like, I mean, it, that was yeah. great. Layers. Uh, <laughs> there's hey, an Edgar everybody, Allen. give yourself a big pat on the back. <laughs> there's uh, another Edgar Allan Poe story where he shuts a cat up in a wall, so it's right up your alley, Pete. I don't want a cat in my wall. Well, it's dead. It's dead. I'm just saying. Wouldn't, wouldn't, that make, wouldn't that make the house stink? Uh, it makes the police come to the house, and the guy goes insane. Because everybody's insane in Edgar Allan Poe stories. Well, he was he was a, like tertiary syphilitic. I mean, a little bit. And a, and he was drinking like wood alcohol. Absinthe, a little bit. So he takes control of the ship. Great Kip's hair. Like, oh, it'd be better. Though. And we, they uh, crash. And he, they start crashing into the planet. And he says the line, gravity. "You win again, gravity." Yeah. I thought somebody else was gonna <laughs> jump in on that. So they crash. I, That's so, where we yeah, go to but the B story that, then. Like ten minutes ago. Oh, you did. Oh. Yeah. Um, so, well, I mean, we've, yeah, we've said a couple things that are still coming up in the then, episode. So they crash so, and then it hops back to the Zoidberg Then that's when it goes shell. to the Zoidberg stuff. They're going through the, the, the shell stuff. Uh, Zoidberg puts on the Mexican one and that's when Bender gets offended and yeah. opens his chest. Uh, de Mexico. And it, um, falls off, which, you know, is a joke about, uh, Mexican, um. Good thing we're building the wall to keep them all out, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. it, Bender wouldn't be allowed. Uh, <sighs> I once had a Volkswagen that, it was like that was made in Mexico. Hot, hot-blooded Latino. Yeah, Latino. Latino. bad hombre. Yeah. Bender's a bad hombre. But this is Verdad. Uh, there's a lot of good Bender lines in this one. Uh, or, or Bender moments, at least. Uh, where, you know, the stuff later with him and the, the um, Fembot and everything. But when, uh, you know, they're like, oh, we have to go rescue um, Well, they a- call Amy and the Leela. restaurant... Is that what happened? They oh, oh, they calls oh, the yeah, restaurant. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. And joke. he's like, "This beep beep boop. This restaurant is crashing into." Was that what it is? Something like that. It right? was like yeah. crash restaurant. Please update your contacts or something. And then uh, Bender doesn't want to go, and Fry's like, 
the Bender, think of the senoritas. And then there's a little Spanish guitar, like, ding, and Bender, like, gets all noble, you know? Really? You thought that was funny? Was it Don yeah. Quixote? I don't know why. I, I, oh, I agree. I agree with your, your it's the facial It's pronounced like, it's, Quixote. I, I, Quixotic? I don't know. Don Quixote. Uh, my favorite is when I'm going to just pop Yeah, in. keep going. When I have students write about Don Quixote, when my students refer to him as Don, is that is his first name? It's not his first Aww. name. <laughs> Or Mr. Quixote. Like, Easy D Quixote. There was that cartoon, <laughs> though, about yes. Don Quixote. It is also well known among literary scholars that cartoons are exact to the, liter- the literature. That's where Tom and I get all of our <laughs> knowledge of like uh, historical literature. That's, I understand. There's a Moby Dick episode of this, sort of. Yeah, and it's no, way you gotta be in better than too. the book, Done. for sure. <laughs> Shorter. Um, do you, uh, did, is that, I mean, do you guys do Don Quixote? Does it come up? Like when that, I teach world lit, I've taught it before. Oh, okay. It's um, about a donkey. A little bit. And it's about that cat Don who is nice and white, white and fat, <laughs> right? That's the oh, Don damn Quixote. It. That took me longer than it <laughs> Oh, damn it. Have. You you stepped all over my Don Gato Sorry. song Don joke. Ga- What's a Don Gato? I was trying to, did anyone sing that in grade school? Don Gato, the cat? Negative. No, 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 no but not even you. You went to, you're, you know, closer to my age. No. Yeah. That day after the restaurant crashes, you know, and after we Fry and uh, Bender decide to go uh, rescue rescue the the senoritas, um, and then there's the giant can of tab, ha ha ha, <laughs> and the barrettes. Yeah. Fun fact, you, yeah. Uh, in my other life as a uh, whatever gopher for House of Blues, I had to find tab for the Goo Goo Dolls, and it was the dumbest thing I've ever had to do. Really, like I already like the dumbest. Don't. Care for them as they much as it, it is. In their Don't hair. get me wrong; they write some good hooks, but like it, it, in their hair. <laughs> <laughs> but the the worst of it was like I went. I, I mean, I went to like Heinen's or whatever. I went mm-hmm. a couple places. I'm like, I don't know where this is. I've never seen yeah. it. Wait, before. Like, but I this don't know. was this tab version one or tab 2.0 which was like a pink skinny can beverage because the old stuff was like diet coke no no it is the old stuff it is the diet tab i thought beverage. they stopped making that in like 1990 i can answer that so here's right. the thing so i get back to the club and i'm like hey i don't know where this is like i got nothing because my job that day was to just go find stuff um and the one guy on tour is like oh why don't you just go try the little places like just go try little beverage stores like i looked at him like you want me to just like drive down Lorraine and stop at every place that sells a whatever. So the guy I was dating at the time actually went online and there's like a tab lovers website <laughs> that they'll, they'll detail in every city where tab is a hundred percent. And I found it and I bought it and I wanted to where throw did it you, at the Where head. did you find it? I think it might've been, it might've been actually at the Heinen's in Rocky river or something. But it was that just like tracks. a random, like, <laughs> I mean, this was also like probably nine years ago or something like that. But Still, it was just. I thought that shit disappeared. Like, also, how it many was gone? cities did they actually find like, tab? successfully find tab for mm-hmm. them? Like, it was just a dick move. Like, there might there were be certain ones of these where it's a dick move. Where just why like, can't you have yeah. Diet Coke? You might have why? a Goo Goo Dolls song written Because I've got you. extra Z because you found that it. That is fine. Oh, no, I don't want that. <laughs> I want the anger. I've been holding on to that story for nine years. I still have the anger. And fuck you, Johnny Resnick. Hey, Seriously. fuck you. Google Dows, drink a beer. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Find um, a distortion pedal, why don't you, like you had in the old days. <clears throat> oh, my, your God. <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that what he says when they see the... Uh... Well, they, I, I liked how they were hiding in the skirt of the Amazonian. <laughs> well, before Bender and Fry got there, we went back to our crashed crew first, and uh, uh, Zap Brannigan's talking to... The um, Amazonians? No, he's well, he's talking to Amy and Leela, and he's yeah. like, and Kiff, and he's like, uh, it's like nothing left to do but repopulate the yeah. earth, and maybe with you <laughs> too. <laughs> and yeah, he's like, yeah, to to Amy or whatever. And that's after that. That's where um, they first, you know, they hide, and then the Amazonian woman comes out, totally successfully hiding, and then Zap pops his head up, and thank God. You said all of that because I did not We're watch the skip episode over that. at all. Really? Oh, good for you. I uh, no, I'm kidding. Oh, oh, it's all I getting continu- cut out, buddy. Continuity question. <laughs> wait, we were in a good place. The Amazonians you ruined it you, the by Amazon- going back wait, to the. But the Amazonians are too part much plot of, summary. They're, they're part of the dupe. They were in the episode, yeah. in fact, where Zap saws the dupe in half because Fry was talking to the one Amazonian woman. So. Why is this like some new discovery of an exotic species when they've 
they've had contact before and they have diplomatic relations. First of all, uh, do you think Fry or Zap would remember meeting anyone like that at all? Fry, Probably not. Fry was clearly attracted to the Amazonian woman. Yeah. And chatting her and up. And how I long think, ago was that? I think, he, well... In our years or space Did years. Did they say anything? Like, we've never heard of Amazonians before? Or no. they just go, they oh, No, but anything. they didn't, they, I mean, they, it's like they had no idea about their culture or anything, but they, they are part of a diplomatic To be body. fair, we're in the UN, but if I dropped you into the middle of half of the countries at the, part of the UN, I don't know. You just, you know, gargle just and click and drop your T's and you should be fine. Yeah, the... The Amazonian women capture the Fry and Bender. And racist. Go ahead. Zip. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not racist. It's ignorant. culturally insensitive. It's incredibly think, ignorant. Okay, yeah. but, but that's. I don't know enough to make generalities. <laughs> I Nothing. know for a fact that all savages are fluent in American sign Stop language. Stop making fun of the, 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 the hey. Danish. Are, <laughs> are these Amazonian women making fun of women? Like, look at the way they're talking. Well, they're a weird. The they're whole uh, their whole part of it is a she weird. She know what like, to do. Well, the whole fundamental. They're primitive. They're the primitive. WNBA. It's, and the all the WNBA jokes are hilarious. It's what happens when feminism runs rampant. Why do you think our entire <laughs> administration now is so scared of women and and feminism? Because and it turns out we had yeah, no because reason to they'll be just, at all. They'll just become brutish and gigantic. And crude. Because it's more fun to watch. They won't <laughs> adhere to the current cultural standards of beauty. It'll turn into a whole But they thing. do. And that's the funny part. I, like, I the whole... Well, I was trying to figure out a way, as I was watching it, like, to verbalize that, where they're a weird amalgamation of... They kind of embody the idea of, like, the one theory of, like, women don't wear makeup for men. Women wear makeup for other women. And then... I don't know if there's some truth to that or whatever, and you guys can forward all the tweets to me that you get on that <laughs> one, and that's fine. Um, but they're like, well, it's because there's, I mean, there's they're, no they're definition of, of feminism. Or because, right. I was going to say they're a group of feminists, and uh, you can't see the air quotes in that. Right, because written yeah. by men. And yeah, I mean, it's written, the Absol- episode's absolutely. written by men. So everybody it's all... knows that beauty is a sitting down pissing contest, right? <laughs> I would win because I can pee for a real long time. <laughs> me too. I I uh, and stop. In Sean the Burns, longest Peter the, I've the, ever met. The drollery domicile that that whole thing where they're explaining all it's is funny but in different way. <laughs> well, uh, when they show them the comedy, yeah, club or comedy whatever, club. Uh, yeah, but they're like it's uh, uh, situations not not based on ridiculous uh, moments, but on uh, character development, which is funny because they're they're making that joke and. Uh, they're like, yeah, sure, you know, making fun of them back, you know, the men are, and uh, you know, except for well, Kip. and last week's episode had Sarah Silverman on it too, right? Uh, go ahead with what's no, your I, point. I mean, well, she is arguably one of the most well-known female comics. They in are the also world. the joke. That wasn't the point there? Uh, the the fact that at this point, also like the like character development and situational humor were becoming yeah bigger. now they're now yeah, now like, you, you you know a uh, aziz and sorry show or or that you know love that judd apatow thing or just any i mean think of all the shows that we're all mostly watching now they're all girls oh, i yeah the the situation like the situational comedies are like killing the like ridiculous you know sitcoms and oh yeah oh yeah broad city is funnier than Big Bang yeah. theory yeah i mean that's yeah. A really good show and a really bad show, and putting them together. Big Bang but Theory is true. massively popular, though. And yeah, but I mean, critically, find somebody that isn't my stepdad that thinks. Uh, no, I understand. I'm just saying, like, it's something. Oh a yeah, lot no, of you're right. Yeah, I, okay. I've if been you, thinking yeah. a lot this week. It's, about it's the biggest how... show. It is the most popular oh, yeah. uh, comedy. Just, out just there. out of tune with, with the. The general po- like I, I'm trying to be vague about this because it's work related, but there's a. There's a thing going on at work. Did you talk to Russia? We didn't know. But, but only for money. Damn. Um, no, there, there's a a there's a promotion that we're doing that I free I just, slurm for everyone. Yeah. And I'm just I'm just like 
vexed by it. Like, I just can't wrap my head around why it would be a good idea. And then I have to step back and just go like, no, I understanding what the objective of that is. It probably will do really well. And it's because I don't understand how most people think or work. And that's such a, I mean, I still forget that all the time because I just can't believe how fucked the world is. And, and, and it, it's like, what? To extend, oh, no, most people don't think like oh, yeah. that. To uh, extend the romantic session of this Valentine's Day session, I have that conversation with my husband daily. I'm like, <laughs> most people don't do this. Most people don't want to pet a bear or idolize but, but why? Doug Seuss as much as you do. And it's yeah, it doesn't work out so well. Is it like a nightly argument where he wants to start a company of petting bears <laughs> and you have to like tell him that honestly man most people are not yes. wanting to want to be a bear around a bear yes pretty much eric make it, you make him take the bear I will costume invest in off this. and i will Ackerman invest in this company my Ackerman wants to be a bear um, <laughs> have, you, have you ever walked into you know the what? house and found him dressed as a bear or just like sitting and doing his normal daily things no. <laughs> if but he was, would you know the difference? He's, he's a fuzzy dude. <laughs> we have a furry blanket that he's worn. It's like it's more Viking. But I mean more like like beast rather than Wolverine. Just the No, you know. that will never win out in that man's mind. No. Beast will never win out over Wolverine. I don't mean yeah. I don't mean literally like the X Men, I just meant I don't, like completely I don't believe that there's a person that believes just... that Beast could beat Wolverine. I'm sorry. No, 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 you guys you're taking it too literally. Never mind. You meant visually. No, I get it. Yeah. I'm just yeah. saying like that's that will never happen. Rule thirty. He's actually not all that furry <laughs> Beast and Wolverine. Of his head. I'm sure. Who, who yeah, overpowers who? Um, I'm pretty also, sure Beast will overpower I, Wolverine I also in just Rule 34. I point out that for the majority of an episode that is about some form of feminism, I've talked about my husband. Chalk one up for me. <laughs> yep. Hey. We that's, how take... I, that's how I identify you. You're my buddy's wife. Most of yeah. these discussions we need to take to the computer. Fry asked if she's hot. Yeah, that's what I was going <laughs> to yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which, I, Which is a fundamental question yes. for any dude when somebody's talking about a girl is like, as, as far well, is she as hot? Like, <laughs> being amused terrible. by the, like, it's, as far as, like, all the times where I, 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 I high road myself and I'm, I'm like, no, I'm a... Uh, or I, I'm not like that. I'm not, you know, but, but then uh, totally, I don't want to say like revel in, in just being like, yeah, well, a lot of times, you know, I'm just a, a, some a doofus like everybody else, other, every other guy or whatever. Um, this is one of those things where j- just because it's so true to life and Teresa, I don't know how aware of you are of this, but that question, uh, that th- anytime, if I'm, if I'm talking to Tom on the phone and he's telling me a story about something or whatever, the other person, me in this situation, is waiting for him to finish the sentence. So it, it, it's an uncomfortable thing where we're waiting there's for you so to finish many the sentence too. guys that I, I'm, I'm, when I'm telling them something, I know they're sitting there and all they want to do is go, well, w- w- is she hot? Like that's I, I there's no reason to know that it has nothing to do with it. And then what is what is um, Fry, Fry asked the question? Right. And then she answers. Uh, she's the smartest. It doesn't matter. She's all knowing. And then what does yeah. Fry say? And then Fry's like, <laughs> "Oh, so no. that, that means <laughs> <That's> a no." <laughs> yeah. I. It took me a little bit to place B. Arthur's voice. <sighs> Disappointing. Well, it because I I haven't heard her speak in several yeah, years. Yeah, and it, she's not like. A, I mean, yeah. I stuck around watching the credits to confirm that it was her. Like I figured. Golden it Girls out. is on Hulu. There's no excuse. <laughs> Listen, I've got. <sighs> A stack of things to watch <laughs> before I get back to things that I've watched you need, already. Like, uh, aperitif. She's credited as Beatrice Arthur. Really? Uh, uh-huh. you, here's here's the thing. I went back and read her Wikipedia entry after. Yeah. Number one, pretty exciting life. Oh yeah. And number two, I didn't know that. There is a picture of her. She was uh, she was in the Marines or like in the steno pool for the Marines. Didn't know that. And there's a picture of her ID. Sorry. Like from World War Two or Korea or whatever. Is she hot? Sorry. She, I wouldn't say <laughs> hot, but she's striking. She's really Does she attractive. Look good, good. But no, and and the reason I bring it up is because she was for decades a punchline of just like, well, she's a real mannish woman, and it's mostly yeah, that because was she was always, like you know. outspoken feminist. And then when she was because she was a stern person, and That's when why she it... was coming to prominence, like especially on Maud, like mm-hmm. fashion was not particularly flattering for anybody. So they gave her this weird fucking feathered hair and a lot of ascots and shit, and. Mm-hmm. 
because but, she was a, a woman on top. That was the whole thing, especially at that time, where it's like as soon as somebody, unless they were like, hee hee, you know, uh, even like your Mary, Mary Tyler Moore is like, hang on, I got I got to research. Yeah, from that the, bra uh, needs to shut up. I mean, that's a whole, you know, in the movie Airheads, they take over the radio station to demand, and that was the person nude, that would be the who they would to make them sound insane. That was the whole thing. Was oh, B-A-R-R-3. you can plead insanity later if you ask for some. I mean, it's a military ID photo, so it's not like she's dolled up, but, you know. She looks like a lady. Let the record show Pete is currently me showing a picture of his dick. He has a problem. <laughs> and the translation is that B. Wearing, Arthur, wearing an ascot. Arthur was all-knowing, which means... <laughs> picture of his dick with... He superimposed a Betty White next to it. <laughs> I got it. I got it. <laughs> Oh, uh, where uh, where are we? Um, we're going we're at Snoo Snoo. Snoo. We yeah, are yeah. at Snoo Snoo. And uh, that does not fempute. The whole exchange between the femputer, the Amazonians, the whole episode, but I mean, this, all of this is one of my favorite just five minutes of Futurama ever. Them finding out about the crust pelvises, their faces later. I don't want to jump Yay! ahead. Somebody oh. else take it. You know what we're all getting to. Like that's <laughs> well, that's what I pretty much wrote down is the uh, is just that fear stuff. and like excitement of like Kiss every face stays the like, same. Yes, and just Ryan and Zap just like ah, oh, and they're not matched up. It's like back and forth. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then we learn that Bender is a man bot, not a man. Yeah. So uh, there's nothing down there. Uh, one, one, uh, one. Uh, I, I feel like a lot of people. Miss this, but it, I don't know why it makes me laugh so much. Something about the sound, and then you know what I'm gonna <laughs> like say? A metal cup. No, no, no. Before that, when uh, 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 Zap's getting the thing, or the belt around his neck thing, or whatever, he's like tight, tight, <laughs> too tight. He's like, "How about a little spanking on my or whatever?" How about a little spanking is in order? <laughs> and then uh, she just like the sound <laughs> of, of the hit sounds like that sound you know when you when you punch like a uh, just a, a mat, yeah, yeah, you know, or like a mattress, just that yeah. doof, and then his oof, <laughs> like it's so. And and oh. they they remark that Kiff is the most attractive. Mm-hmm. Um, oh I, 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 yes, because uh, Zap will be snoo snooed by the large women, yeah. Fry by the petite women, Kiff the most beautiful, and then will the be large, and then the petite snoo snooed by the most beautiful women of Amazonia, the then the large women, women the then the petite women. women then the, the large women, women again. <laughs> uh, when they show the skeletons and they're shattered, and one of them is smoking a cigarette, and they're all they're all smiling and like talking to each other, like, hey, like how did how did uh, 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 you know how did they die? And they tell them, and they're just like, yeah, yeah. And then so she goes away. They have a little exchange, and then the computer comes back, and she's like, I, I've decided, you know, the, your, your punishment, death <gasps> by Snoo Snoo. Ah, and then uh, later Fry's like, oh, I, I, I'll, um. I, what, what, what did you say? I uh, wanted to die this way, but I always hoped. Or what, what is it? It's something. I don't remember. I did, I have the note saying, "What are you gay?" Oh, when uh, <laughs> Kip gets gets yeah. scared or whatever. Yeah, it, um, it's it's a. I mean, it's the, it's turning around uh, on that old, old, old street joke of like death by unga bunga, and the fact that they kind of resurrect that as being the big reveal on this episode, I thought was pretty interesting. The best line is still when he come, when Zap comes out and says. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak and squishy. Sp- spongy, spongy and bruised. Spongy, <laughs> spongy and bruised. That's it. Damn it. Yeah, the spirit is willing, but the flesh spongy. is weak. Or er, bruised and spongy. The uh, I, I, Just as a side note, and this goes back actually quite a bit in the episode, but I, I kept seeing it and remarking it. Like, Amy's dress is really crazy. Like, it's, it's a really interesting cut. And uh, usually when they do get dolled up on things, I make a reference to it. But, like... Just the physics of Usually? it. Usually, yeah. Because so far, you're you're batting a, a, a thousand here. <laughs> okay, I mean, there must have been like adhesive or something involved because it was like could be plastic. Yeah, I it feel was... like I've seen a dress like that at like an award show where yeah. like the cutouts, there's like mesh there or something to hold it up. Lil but... Kim had just a thing. You well, did, that was a, a pasty. A pasty. Right. Uh, I believe uh, Amy is a. <laughs> I've told what? you, right? I have told you what <laughs> over and over. <laughs> That that's not appropriate, and she's just a sex-positive character. No. <laughs> Tom loves to slut shame. He thinks it, uh, it makes him feel more Tom empowered as Tom lives a man. in 15 glass houses built on top of each other. 
And 57 years, with not his, a single person his, has thrown a stone. With his roommate, Billy Joel. Uh, <laughs> I, I, on an old, on old uh, glass Indian burial ground. Despite, on 50 mattresses underneath a tiny pea. Despite Amy. This is a pea's on top. <laughs> you said 50 mattresses underneath a tiny pea. If he yeah. drinks too much, the pee is always on top. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> have you seen how many times he's gone up to use the bathroom? I'm he's got a you. tiny bladder. <laughs> I'm going to miss you, Meatbag. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm going to miss... Or, uh, I fuck love it. it. I, despite I'm being Martian, too, I love the fact that Amy yells in Cantonese, or maybe it's Mandarin, but she, whichever she yells Mandarin. in Chinese, <laughs> it's always... It's just to it's be so good. Honest in the... Uh, Subtitles, it just says Angle- Asian language. <laughs> <laughs> Who's culturally like, insensitive yell- now? Yelling in an Ang- awesome. Asian language. That's awesome. It's just, it, it makes me, it reminds me of my ex in laws. Tonk fat. <laughs> and and no. they were no. usually. Fat. They were usually yelling at each other or so my these ex-wife, like, which it's, is why it's, it was pleasant. It's it's like the early 2000s, whatever, and it's like humor has changed that much. And yeah, this th- these jokes were done to death by then, but it's funny because it's this cartoon and, you know, these d- different characters, whatever. Is that is watching that now, this is a question for everybody, is watching that now, um, you're like, is it still funny? Or you're like, well, this is, you know, I mean, that's kind of a thing it's with still watching funny. an old show. You know, yeah, okay. Do you think eh. that it's kind of like just, the do you think it was hackneyed then? Was, eh. Do you well, think that that type of humor, like, is that, like you I said, a bunch of dudes writing, like, these jokes about, like, is it, I obviously you get it. I know you get this. The well, joke. the, the Tonk Fat thing, I mean, the most of them are just so overt that it's not a thing where, like, a, a good example would be, so, like, I was watching, I rewatched Friends a while ago, mm-hmm. and the frequency of, like, homophobic jokes, and not just, like, oh, yeah. the, what are you, gay, but yeah. even, like, the whole don't touch each other because yeah, if yeah, you yeah. touch like, the oh, other one, yeah. that means you clearly want to put it in them. And that was really funny back then. That was yeah. funny to me as or a teenager, even just you know, whatever. Putting a fat suit on Monica and then having her dance over music yeah, at the end yeah. of the credits, that was the joke. Yeah. It wasn't it was like, even oh, like she's fat. they That's were right, okay, they weren't but, putting it but my point with this is like with this episode, it's not like when Fry does the blah 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 or yeah, yeah. any of that. Like it's all so overt compared to how the rest of the humor is like that's not they're not resting on those jokes to be funny they're like ha, ha, see what everybody else is doing ha, ha. but like yeah at this rate like it's, right it's a little now, lazy it's a little lazy back then it'd a be little super bit lazy now. i think the tonk fat thing could have been better like it would be like a mike and molly everybody loves that joke was really lame there's a lot of jokes that are really oh, yeah, lame in this yeah i think it's a lot of, there's a lot of lazy comedy like in this the fundamentals episode. thing is funny that part I think is funny, like the especially because they come back to it mm-hmm. and the the comedy. No, one I thought is that funny. was lazy because oh, she see, just they, they redid the joke. What she should have done mm-hmm. was they should have brought the basketball up again, and then she should have said another women's basketball joke. Which again, I think the whole thing is lazy. Like, yeah, I, well, women's basketball. Huh, I'll tell whatever. you another place that would have been a really funny joke. She right repeated when, the same line in a different order. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. It should have been a different joke. I'm bringing it back around yeah, um, to the beginning or when they crash on the planet and whatever yeah and there's fire all around them like of like the crash ship or whatever uh-huh. and then they're like somewhere i think it would have been way funnier if zap was trying to start a fire in the middle of like everything <laughs> like oh like the crashed that. around okay. all right so like, first we have to get the time machine that, then yeah. we have to fax them in if, is you, unsolicited if that would have happened visually jokes. that's one of those futurama jokes where it would have aired Going to DVD, been on Netflix. It probably would have taken me ten to twenty times to go. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. like yeah. there's a moment in a SpongeBob episode where they have like a, a campfire or something, and Patrick just goes, "Wait a minute," and then it goes out. And then that <laughs> oh, was, yeah. no I don't money. remember that. <laughs> right. There, there's a like some rapid fire stuff here at the end that's really good. There's the small girl steal k- green kissy man <laughs> when when Amy yeah. runs off yeah. with Kiff. That was good. But then there's the resolution to the Zoidberg. <laughs> Uh, shell problem. And he's like, I found it in the same oh. place I left it. Only it had a live raccoon yeah. in it. <laughs> well, we have also kind of ignored like the whole Leela wants to live there thing. She's yeah. she likes you but, know. Well, she yeah. has a listing for apartments. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget. Okay, there was that. So whole, like that. Yeah. Well, was of... it that she wanted to, or did, was she resigned to the fact that they weren't going to be able to leave? No, it was. There was a joke where uh, somebody said something about like one of the Amazonians said something about like there were no men and they didn't need them anymore, 
and I think uh, um, the wasn't it the point where uh, Amy, Amy whispered no, said to something about it, like being nice, like and then Amy's to, like, oh, she why, goes, "What the men were what, for? What you use men yeah. for on your planet?" And then yeah. she goes, <laughs> "Oh, snoo snoo." snoo. Right. Is that what the part you're talking about? I don't know if it was that one. I think it was before that, though, where they said something about how men died out, and Amy said something about it being, like, convenient. And then Leela's like, oh, I'm already looking that's for apartments, were, yeah, and she that's has when they were the walking, Westlife apartments or When they were doing the whole... Um, the tour. Speak yes, to yeah. someone else, you windy barnacle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, the only... Uh, that's the only uh, Hermes line that we need to no, and, acknowledge. And it is... It is I love it because it was so he, little that he was in there, but him and Zoidberg's. I just, were I great. love his just yeah. overwhelming hatred of Zoidberg, and just it's, it's not even masked. It's just anytime he has to interact with that that, you know, poor creature, it's always just like incendiary hate. <laughs> and and otherwise, I mean, despite being a bureaucrat, he's really pretty even keeled. It's just when it comes to Zoidberg's. He's got to blame someone. Blame someone. Why not Zoidberg? <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end, uh, Fry and Zap are both in pelvic Because it was the best <laughs> mission ever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I forget the exact... <clears throat> it's not the last line, but um, Fry says something, and then there's like a pause. <laughs> and... It, but, you know, Zap's just like, I had snoo snoo. Just <laughs> yeah. so proud. Standing there and just the... the, Cause, the but only before that, he only had Leela. Huh? Yeah. yeah, there's a moment where he says to uh, Fry when he's like, oh, um, he says something about the snoo snoo, and, and Zap turns to him and just goes, I feel like it was like this filler line, but he's like, it'll blow your mind. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, I, was, I wrote that down as a line. I was thinking about it, and I'm like, I'm like, wait a second. He just Baby like, will blow your yeah, mind. Like, yeah, he just had um, sex with Leela, and that was, I don't remember, was that his first time, or was that? Yeah. Or it's yeah. rare, though, right? It, no, no, no. It was, it was never, I guess I don't feel it like has been insinuated was, that that was the case, but it has never been 100% confirmed. I, I feel the same way you do. I can't, can't remember. Like, it's hard to tell what's bullshit and what isn't and what isn't revisionist yeah. history with Zap. This episode was also nom- this it. episode was also nominated for an Emmy. Oh really? What? And it really? lost uh for you outstanding sound like you're breaking up. <laughs> like you're so <laughs> you're really upset really about that. Really bad. <laughs> that bad that you sound like you're, make a tiny you're making on top of an his Oscar mattresses. speech and you're about to cry. <laughs> this that works episode really was, well on a podcast. This episode was nominated for an Emmy in well, 2001. Not this podcast episode. Be- before the facts, the last <laughs> All right, keep going. I don't care. So, uh, when you said Spider or S- Superman, uh, one other like it's not exactly a direct reference, but like basically throughout the whole episode, it makes me think of uh, Wonder Woman, like the whole creation of Wonder Woman. Her, being, well, I mean, she is an Amazon, yeah, exactly, and the whole like still being beautiful and all that stuff. There's a really good book that was out. I don't know. I think it's probably like a year and a half old by now. It's the Secret Life of Wonder Woman, where they go into the, like a whole history of her. And the guy who created her, and he's a guy, but, like, on purpose, he had her be bigger, muscular, but still, like, sexy. Mm-hmm. Um, because he was a, like, submissive sexually who had like, a crazy... I don't want to... Okay. I'm not going to I'm not gonna level uh, any sort of judgment on it, but he was in, like, a, a polyamorous relationship with a wife and a wives. girlfriend. Yeah, not, I yeah. don't think of you as, like... No, yeah, well, I, I know you're I'm just, sure. You're just, I'm sure you drop a word like crazy on top of that, and somebody will take oh, offense. I, didn't I don't mean like... to do that, but like, yeah, it, it's kind of a sordid history, especially from the time period where it. it yeah. Oh came no, out. I mean, he wasn't. He certainly wasn't vanilla, but like, just the purposeness of Wonder Woman looking the way that she does, like as we're talking about, like the Amazons looking. Was she hot? Fundamentally. <laughs> 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 Looking purposefully, like, physically attractive of, like, the high-cut bottoms and the hair and the makeup and whatever. Oh, so I just no. remind me of that. <laughs> um, oh. uh, when uh, Dan Hallahan was on, he talked about books, and we cut the whole thing out. So, Tom, <laughs> you know, write this down. Make sure. It's because you kept first hitting of all, the table. <laughs> a a woman that can read. I actually interjected into the podcast about how boring it was. <laughs> I didn't even cut it out. Tom and Pete Aww. talked about books for like 
four hours. It, it was just Dan um, and Pete, not Tom and Pete. That's what I. Oh, I thought I. I you said I, Tom. I meant I meant Dan. And I, Pete. I, I, you so, dummy! You said the wrong name. <laughs> just uh, just out of curiosity, we haven't asked this of, of a guest. In wait, a wait, while. before we get into this, yeah. stuff, last line of the episode. It just real quick. I just want to. I I need to complete it. Is just Kiff and Amy talking, and Kiff's like, well, what, "What do you want to do now?" And Amy's like. And she's, you know, saying that that's how the episode ends. Okay, go ahead. Go no, blah, 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 what do you want to say about the Emmy thing, though? No, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. It was nominated for an Emmy for Outstanding Animated Comedy, and it mm-hmm. lost to The Simpsons. And when they announced The Simpsons, Matt Groening went to go up with the rest of the people, and people stopped him because they thought of him as Futurama. Huh. Really, huh. and like he got to go up there and everything. It's like almost that. like, like the, right the, the people who run award shows are not. They have all no that idea. I don't. I don't understand why would who stopped him? Who tried to stop him? They the award show police. No, but I mean, mm-hmm. he would go up for either one, right? But they didn't think that they didn't like, realize he was part of the Simpsons as yeah. well. Wait, so the thing because he was known sitting for? with he, oh, was sitting he was sitting with Futurama with that. That makes more people. Sense. Okay, okay, so I'm the sorry. people there were like, no, yes. buddy. Okay, my yeah, mind yeah. was blown when I listened to a podcast with Billy West on it. I think it was the Nerdist, and he's like in his mid sixties. Yep, mm-hmm. yep, weird. Yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, he's done a lot. He's been in show business for but years. But still, sounds like he's fifteen. He, he and he looks good too. Like I've I, seen recent I, pictures uh, of him. He, he sounds like Fry. Like well, yeah. there's yeah. like a lot of Fry he, in his Stimpy. I knew he was Her Yeah, brain. yeah. When it's he, a combination of Fry and Stimpy. When he was on Nerdist, like I, I, I assumed because you know he's been I I've known that he's been in show business for like 30 years. So I assumed he was going to be like five or ten years older than Chris Hardwick. Early mid fifties. Twenty. <laughs> but not in his sixties like right. dude, you know but you had to think like a lot of those guys, you know, they've been at it for a long so what I was going to say uh, after that little detour before it was, um, if you could see a spinoff show of any character from Futurama, who would you like to see a show about? Uh, Laura Nenunda. Oh, uh, yeah. Good fucking answer yeah, that nobody's that's a good ever answer. given, but I would totally watch that. Yeah. That would be a great, like, I, I I don't know uh, honeymooners just a oh, yeah. different take on like you know I mean they are the honeymooners more or less straight to yeah. Omicron Percy I nine <laughs> <laughs> I have some zoom cho- say I have some chalky hearts that are confusing and... do you think they sleep in separate beds <laughs> they have to they're huge why can't what if it's they a have really a huge big bed, bed? Ah. I don't know. Look at the size of that platform. (laughs) (laughs) Good answer. Uh, I mean, they have kids, so clearly they've shared a bed at one point. Well, the kids hatch out of the ground in the poplars. But they gotta be fertilized. Uh, You know what? That was never settled when we had them. Yeah, we talked about that, that that they... Had to have laid something down, and then there was fertilization happening, and then they grow. Well, it is Valentine's and become Day. delicious. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> you can fertilize. You, you can. can fertilize internally, and then lay eggs after, and then put the eggs somewhere. That's what a lot of species on this planet do. You mean fertilize Horchies? externally, like lay no, the eggs internally. and then somebody? Well, yeah. No, I'm saying you can do that. What are you? I think you're you talking up the about like a Morrissey where, type thing where no, you're asexual. <laughs> no, I didn't. I, I didn't totally understand what you guys were arguing about. I was arguing that Lauren Nanunda must have done it at some point. Yes, they did. But you can also fertilize eggs outside. You can also okay. So, so maybe okay, they did. We don't know. It could be. We don't way. know if there's we PNV don't know. fertilization we need to get some sort going of herpetologist on. on top I'm talking of this. about you need a man and a woman, and maybe another woman. And then maybe another man. Devil's trying. And then maybe like three other men to hold and the lights and the camera. And four women, two goats, mm-hmm. and probably some yogurt. No, a baby pool full of chocolate pudding. Oh no, that's an old David talk. Almost tapioca, tapioca. Ooh, chunky. Sorry. Thanks for playing. <laughs> <laughs> that was survey says tapioca. <laughs> you have a wonderful parting gift. <laughs> it's a baby pool full of tapioca. But, but you got to get it out of here tonight, <laughs> either by eating it or or some other method. It's about but, to turn, otherwise it just gets. Smelled. Yeah, uh, I think we've said more than enough about this episode, and probably some things we shouldn't have. 
There's a lot of things we should have, said. but it's Valentine's Day. What guys. a taboo <laughs> episode! Do you, have, do you have any uh, anything you'd like to plug? You can check out Teresa's friend uh, Rick Horchie on Twitter at <laughs> R Horchie. So thanks for being here. We can follow your husband <laughs> at uh, this and that. Let's let's get Allison Bechdel's opinion on that. Uh, we can be found at Slurmcast. Dot com. You can email us at slurmcastpod at gmail.com. We are on Twitter at slurmcastpod, Instagram at slurmcastpod. I'm trying to get it all out in one place. Uh, good vote. Good, good try. Facebook, phone number. YouTube. Uh, phone you, number is yeah. 216, uh, blah, blah, blah. 438. 1077. We actually got a voicemail last week that we referenced earlier in the show. Thanks for calling. That was enjoyable. Uh, Leave us alone. John K. <laughs> Stop calling and breathing. John Kelman can keep texting us weird non sequiturs, but if anybody else wants to do that, we'd we'd welcome that too. Um, is there anything else to, to pre- leave us reviews in iTunes, please? Somebody did that last week, and it's always nice to see that number change. Uh, send us some weird stuff, like our posts. Weird stuff. I mean, somebody weird emailed stuff us means, uh, uh, money. Just a picture of something they found referencing Futurama, and I posted it and a ton of people loved it. Have you heard about this? Weird wild stuff, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Just for Pete. Just for Pete. <laughs> hey Bye. <laughs>